What's going on pilots? My name is Reach, and starting with this video, this will be one of many installments of tutorial videos that I will be dedicating to, well, you! The Pilot 101 series will be dedicated to making sure that when it comes to fighting on the frontier, you and your fellow pilots will know exactly what you're doing, no matter what skill level you are. Whether you're a fresh install, a veteran needing to refresh on the basics, or whatever else that's in between, I'm sure there will be something for everyone. With that in mind, let's talk about you and your Titan. As you all hopefully know, there are seven unique titans you can choose from. Each of these titans can be categorized into three classes of chassis, Strider, Atlas, and Ogre. Now as I discuss every titan here, please note that what I'm going to say here is very dumbed down. Every titan is much more intricate than you can imagine, and I'm only describing what the role is in a quick and general sense as a baseline. Remember, real matches will always be the number one way to learn. There's also my basically videos too if you really want to get in tune with one of the titans I've covered so far. Anyways, the Strider class is going to be made up of your Ronins and North Stars. Bearing the lowest health pool, the fastest base speed, and being the only chassis type to come with two dashes, these guys can definitely be rough to handle if you don't know what you're doing. Especially Ronin. Now, I want to emphasize Ronin here because this Titan is a trap for new players. Typically, when players are choosing their first Titan, some will look at them all and think, hmm, Ion is the only one star difficulty Titan. Uh, maybe, maybe I should choose her. But wait a minute, hold on, does this Titan have a fucking sword? Despite having the arguably hardest design, Ronin is equally hard to play. When people choose Ronin, they usually start with two misconceptions. They're a dedicated frontline Titan, because of the shotgun, and two, this sword makes me god, let me smite all the healers. Yeah, that's, that's kinda all wrong. What Ronin really excels at is the art of the flank. With two dashes on default, and a basically third dash in the form of your phase, you're already the most mobile titan in the game by far. Coupled with a shotgun... Oh, wait a minute, this... This is just Scout TF2. While Northstar isn't as slippery as Ronin, she certainly doesn't fall behind. Armed with a railgun, she can deal heavy amounts of damage from the back lines, and the other tools in her kit can really ensure she goes undisturbed. So yeah, just sit back and relax as you snipe those guys one by... one by one. Hey, well, wait a minute. Atlas Titans are probably the most abundant of the three chassis types you'll run into, and that's due to one thing. They're ease of use. Equipped with one dash, average speed, and a modest four bars of health, the Atlas group is what I would typically recommend when a new player should choose from when they decide which Titan to learn first. Consisting of three Titans, let's start with the easiest one, Tone. When it comes to tone, it doesn't take too much to know how to succeed. You get your three locks, fire your rockets, put up shield when in danger, rinse and repeat. Armed with a reliably accurate primary, tone can easily control lanes from mid distances, and while it may be easy to dismiss the power of tone due to her easy gameplay loop, she can rack up some serious damage over time. On the other hand, the so-called one-star difficulty titan Ion is a different story. Unlike every other titan in the game, Ion's whole kit revolves on a resource bar. This resource bar is the real difficulty check, and if you have no idea what you're doing, Ion can easily turn into one of the worst titans to play as a new player. However, once you master that energy bar, pilots will find that Ion can be quite the flexible role, as she can simultaneously perform offense and defense to an adequate degree. Along with tone, Ion can be great to learn as a new player, especially if you want to hone your titan game sense and management. Be warned though, as it can definitely feel unorthodox to play her at first. Despite what I personally think of her, some people will absolutely hate you if this titan is even mentioned. As a monarch, you have only one objective, survive. With the ability to upgrade herself, monarchs can steadily raise points in the background as they proceed to grow stronger the longer they live. Now admittedly, monarch kinda hinges on whether the enemy's team is competent enough to even target you, and besides Ion, monarch is one of the only titans where I've managed to survive the entire match due to people simply not shooting me. She's what you call a snowballer. However, don't be discouraged. Monarch was the first Titan I made, and you shouldn't be afraid to do so either. Moving on to the final chassis type, we've got the big boys in the Ogre class, Scorch and Legion. Armed with the beefiest amount of health, slower 1 dash recharge, and slowest base speed, the Ogre class can actually be quite polarizing at times. In my humble experience, compared to the other Titans in the game, the Ogres have the highest potential to pop off, but at the same time, they can be quite literally the most useless Titans in the game. Fuck! Despite that though, I think that's okay. Because when they do get the chance to pop off, oh man, they do a hell of a good job of doing so. Scorch is all about area denial. 
armed with his thermite pools, Scorch comes ready to burn all your enemies. And himself if you're not careful enough. While Scorch is like a fish out of water in open maps such as Homestead, he can find massive success in the tight lanes of maps like Complex and can completely melt through Titans if he gets a drop on him. Scorch is also able to clear and deny objectives very easily with his flame traps, granted if he's in the right position to do so. Legion is also great at locking down areas as he fires his giant minigun into whatever comes into his his way. <laughs> oh, giant giant minigun. Anyways, each Titan has their own strengths and weaknesses, and while brief, hopefully that overview lets you have the gist of what each Titan is. Now that you know what each Titan is, let's talk about what you can and can't do for your beloved Titan. Now my number one rule for anybody who's looking at the most out of their Titan is for the love of Christ, don't leave your Titan alone unless it's absolutely necessary. It pains me whenever I see somebody let their auto titan roam because that is literally the equivalent of letting your toddler walk out into the middle of the road. Your titan will absolutely get run over and it would have literally been a better choice if you didn't even drop it in at all because at least then you're not feeding the enemy team. Like babies, your titan requires attention and that means whenever possible, you should be getting into your titan. Oh, but I'm running a salt ship. The AI targeting in this game is not great, whether you're running enhanced auto titan or not. And while it may be funny to get the undeserved kill here or there, auto titans don't really understand the concept of positioning, dashing, or coring. If you do end up having to get out of your titan or plan on doing it, please, please at least equip phase embark so you can minimize exposure. That way, if you see a spare battery on the ground, you're free to take it with minimal risk. Okay, but now you've gotten to a few fights and you're doomed. Time to disembark, right? No. Eject. While it may be safer than getting sniped out of the air, an unattended doomed titan can still give meter charge to multiple people, they're susceptible to a free battery pull from a pilot, and worst of all, you can end up feeding an enemy monarch if they get the execution off. But no worries. All of that can be avoided if you simply eject. Hey, but now let's talk about what you should and shouldn't choose for titan kits. Alongside Assault Ship, Stealth Auto Eject is another Titan kit that you should really never choose because of how much it sucks. While you're pretty much guaranteed to be safe from enemy Titans in the Eject, you won't be safe from the Eagle Eye Pilots on the ground. But the real tragedy of this kit is the fact that you have no control over when you eject. A lot of people tend to think that the Doom State is an automatic self-destruct indicator, but you know, that's just not true. When you're Doom, you can still do everything you've done at full health. It's just that you have to be careful of executions and the fact that you're on your last bar of health. So really, being doomed just serves as a final warning before you go down for good. There's also the psychological factor, as a lot of people tend to get tunnel vision on you when you're doomed, meaning that oftentimes you can bait people into unfavorable positions because they think you're a free kill. But yeah, stealth auto eject destroys all that doom potential, so it's garbage. Now the next two kits I'm going to discuss are arguably a lot more situational. Counter ready and nuclear eject. Counter ready is great when you know you're getting rodeo too often, or if you're playing as an aggressive ronin or monarch. Otherwise, in a lot of situations, having an extra electric smoke doesn't really provide the most value compared to two other kits I'll talk about later. Nuclear eject is borderline useless, unless you're playing North Star. And the reason for that is, well, the tether traps. If you're running nuclear eject on other titans, you'll find out quickly that it's borderline useless, since there's really no way the other titans have to force their enemies to eat the ensuing blast. If it wasn't obvious enough by now, tether traps on North Star are probably the only reliable way to score nuclear eject kills, because otherwise, the enemy tends to just run away. Now these last two kits are what is considered to be really the only viable titan kits you should run if you want to get the most out of your titan, turbo engine and overcore. Depending on who you ask, a lot of people tend to choose one or the other, and me personally, I'm a turbo engine fan. When it comes to Titan combat, I firmly believe that positioning is the most important thing one can consider. Having the extra dash really helps a lot more than you think, and while you don't get a second dash on the Ogres, the reduced cooldown time for that one dash is really helpful for those guys since they're already pretty slow. But on the other hand, I can see why Overcore is beloved as well. Always having 20% core is great, especially on Titans like Monarch or Ronin where their cores can allow them to easily dominate other Titans. The reason why I don't choose Overcore though is because I feel like if you're aggressive enough, that 20% extra core doesn't really matter in the end. And while core is something that you have to build up, the extra dash or reduced cooldown will always be something that you will have on hand whenever you may need it. The real answer though is that it ultimately depends on your playstyle. If you're passive and more confident about your positioning, go over core. On the other hand, if you're more aggressive and feel like you need that extra mobility, go turbo engine. Psst, on Scorch and Legion though, always use, always use turbo engine because you know they're just they're just so goddamn slow. 
Some other things to keep note of are how many Titans there are on the field. For example, let's say I'm a Ronin. I'm the first one to get a Titan on the team, but oh no, the enemy team has already deployed three Titans. Should I still deploy mine? No, no, no. Okay, but what if I choose Legion? Would it be okay to drop it then? <laughs> Look, while it may be appealing to drop your Titan as soon as you get it, sometimes you're better off waiting until your fellow pilots also get their Titans, or the enemy Titans are considerably weakened by the efforts of the pilots. Because otherwise, there's really not much you can do in a 1v3 situation. Uh-oh. Stinky! On the subject of dropping Titans, it also matters where you drop your Titan. Like I alluded to earlier, certain Titans perform a lot better on certain maps. For example, a Scorch on Complex is likely to do a lot better than a Scorch on Homestead. Also, when you drop your Titan, make sure you're actually safe. Real ones will know the painful feeling of dying as soon as you call your Titan, only for you to end up spawning on the other side of the map. To mitigate this, I usually wait until I die first, and then as I spawn, that's when I drop my Titan. Now, you can also spawn in as your Titan, but sometimes you can actually be caught out in the open by a roaming Titan if you're unlucky, since you forego the dome shield if you go this route. Plus, if you're running battery boost, it just makes the whole process a lot more inconvenient, since now you have to exit your Titan, activate the boost, and then get back in. Another thing to note is to not get too close to your friendlies. Titans are big guys, and being too grouped up can lead to collateral damage between the team, whether it be through explosive slash damage, blocking a vital shot, or simply body blocking your teammates' escape route. Besides being a detriment, don't forget that your teammates are still a part of your team though. If you see a buddy in trouble, go on over and help him out. Now let's talk about battery etiquette. If you see a friendly Titan get a battery yoinked from them, don't be a greedy hog and make sure you give it back. Not only does it help out the teammate that just got violated, it also helps you out, since if you don't have your Titan yet, you actually get charged in your meter. It goes to show that kindness always pays. Now, I also want to point out that if you're by a Doom Titan, but there also happens to be a friendly Monarch nearby, let them get the Battery Thief execution. Unlike every other Titan, Monarch actually directly benefits from executions due to the battery pull. The faster a Monarch is built, the more reliable they'll end up becoming, so it's always worth feeding a Monarch, especially if you got spare batteries around. Now this section will be dedicated to a bunch of random stuff that I really couldn't fit anywhere else in the video. So, here we are. Warpfall is by no means a bad choice when compared to the good old standard Titanfall. Ditching the safety of the dome shield, the Warpfall allows you to deploy your Titan a lot quicker, which means that you can start being a lot more active in the flank quicker, or if you want to get some calculated funnies. My number one rule though is to always equip Phase Embark with this kit, because otherwise, you're still pretty exposed when you're going through the standard Embark animation. While admittedly super niche, there's a sort of cool movement tech you can do called Disembark Jump. During the Disembark animation, if you jump at the right time, you can actually get some extra height. Is this useful at all? Uh, probably not. But hey, it's cool to know, I guess. Also, good luck trying to do this if you're running Phase Embark. I guess this is technically important, but uh, if you're not already running it, Battery Boost is pretty much a must pick. Besides the fact that it's one of the only useful boosts in the game, being able to restore some HP, shields, and core at any given time is a great thing to have in your back pocket. If you're running Monarch, it can actually be viable to stack multiple batteries for use, since, you know, Monarch is all about survival. While it may not seem obvious at first, target priority is a very real thing when you're piloting your Titan. Typically when I'm roaming around, here's my list of who I target first. Pilots, Monarchs, Lowe's Hell Titan, and then AI. Now you may be surprised to see pilots at the top of the list, but there's a very specific reason for that. They are literal parasites. In a Titan battle, it's very easy for a battle to sway in another's favor if they have a friendly pilot by their side. If left unattended, pilots can just as easily whittle your health down like any other Titan, they can rodeo you when you're not looking, and if you let them damage you long enough, they'll be able to eventually call in their own Titan. With the pilot's ability to gang up on you easily too with their movement, it's very important you stomp them out as soon as you can. As for the rest, it's pretty self-explanatory. Monarchs can snowball, it's best to get a Titan out of the way as soon as you can, and if you're not doing anything else, AIs are a great way to kill time. And yeah, that's the first episode of Pilot 101. As always, feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already, every little bit helps. And we have a Discord server in the description if you want to join that, and if you want extra perks, feel free to support me by becoming a comrade through YouTube memberships. We also have networks on every Titanfall 2 platform, all under the same name, Reach's Comrades. But yeah, this has been Reach, I'll see ya in the next one. Peace.